Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Now, if I did post that other video, which I'm not sure if I'm going to, explanation why, you know, it's been so long since I posted a video, it's wearing the same shirt. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is a class D amplifier. It's a 300 by 300 watt, specs wise. I've got a couple videos on this that you, I'll put the links down below so you can see the background on this. But anyway, it's, it's, it looks like a well-built class D amp. Uh, the specs are a little specsmanship there. Kind of explained that in the video, showed the data sheet on this. I got the switching power supply. We're going to power this guy up. But here's the thing when I had the signal coming into these RCA jacks up here, I had my THD meter there. Okay. Then uh, I read certain THD. And then when I applied power to this, these terminals, I saw the THC go up here. So that's telling me the noise generated by the switching power supply, the class, you know, the class D amplifier here. There's some little uh, regulators here on the board as well. Something's adding noise on this thing. Now, if I just did THD, total harmonic distortion, and I got a one kilohertz signal, so all the, you know, harmonics ran that two kilohertz, three kilohertz, and so on. Um, I don't really see that. But if I have my Keithley meter up here, do THD plus N plus noise, then I do. Now that noise, if I look at the spectrum of that, that could be out of the hearing range. You know, it, the switching frequency on this, like 450 kilohertz, way out of the hearing range. But the noise, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, how much it might affect the electronics uh, and how much of that somehow might get through and you know our hearing whatever you know so uh just trying to get that energy that noise energy out of the circuit so i think putting some capacitors here could clean that up so we're going to take a look at that okay i'm going to show you first with the kai wheats power supply we're going to go right here and then we'll go to the switching power supply and put the voltage here and and we'll see you know if the switcher is any more noisy than the kiwits or if the kiwits is noisy or if it's just all the class d uh noise okay we'll, we'll see if we can figure that out as we look at it um all right so we're going to go ahead and do that and i'll have two eight ohm resistors on the output and let's just jump into the video let's come over here and take a look all right so just a quick walk through the setup i've got the input signal coming in here I got both RCA jacks in parallel, so I've just got the black on black here and the red on red. And I've also got my THD meter right here. This cable kind of come around here, so I'm looking at the input signal there. Then here's our input power to the board right here. This is coming from the Kiwi's power supply, the 31 volts. And then I've got these two leads coming over here to the Bryman meter. And I'm using the Klein. I'll be using it to measure the AC voltage at the input. Right now, I'm just using it for spot checking. But I've got uh, differential probes right here on the, I've got some mixed sig differential probes, what they are, right here at the power. Then I've got another pair of mixed sigs on this channel. And then I've got the Pentec on this other channel. And here, let me just kind of scroll over so you can see that mess. Uh, here's the mix sig differentials. Uh, there's the DP1007, the DP1013, and then the Pentec right here. Okay, and we'll be looking at that mix sig scope right there. And then up here, okay, and then right up here I have my Keithley meter, and the Kiwi's power supply will be using to power it up. Okay, so we're all set up, ready to go. And I think what I'm going to do is zoom in on this scope so you can see what we're doing okay so just go over the scope setup channel one we're going to look at the voltage going into the class d amp and we're going to look at the ripple so i've got that set for 500 millivolts well here i'll show you ac setting voltage 20 megahertz filters on and it's on 10x setting for the dp 1007 mix sig pro channel two you can see it's set up for ac voltage 50x and 20 meg and channel three will be set up the same way. AC, and that's voltage, not current. 
and 50x and let's put that on 20 meg as well okay so uh, those two channels are looking at the left and right outputs okay all right so everything is centered right here in the middle of the screen and we're on 10 volts per division here 10 volts per division here so as we increase the signals oh one thing i should point out is see the little bar across channel four that means it's inverted so i have this invert on as well and the reason i did that is because the signals are going to be the same they're going to be overlapped we won't be able to see both of them so the green one is going to be 180 degrees out of phase on the screen but really it's just been inverted so it's really the same as the other channel and we will be able to tell that by uh, what it looks like by the way there's a quick look at the unity generator i've got the amplitude set so we're going to start 50 millivolts and then i'll increase it okay once we got the signal all right all right so let's go ahead and bring up the voltage and you'll see the yellow one kind of bounce around but it's ac coupled that's the DC voltage coming in, and I'm up to 15 volts. Got both red LEDs on, and you can see the two signals right there. Um, now here, let's go ahead and bring up the signals a little bit. There we go. And there we go. That's what they look like. Now it's kind of bouncing around a little bit because the power supply, I think. So right there, it's nice and clean. And it's kind of bouncing around there. I'm not sure... If that is the uh, power coming in, that's we don't have enough capacitance. So here, let's go to lower frequency so we can see. All right, there's what it looks like. That's why it's doing that. So as I increase it, okay, so I'm 130 watts. You can kind of see It looks like there's a little rip on the power supply. So I'm dropping it down now. Okay, let's increase the power. Uh, 36 watts at the power supply, the Kiwits. That is 51 watts, 52 watts. And that's 70 watts at the power supply. And there's 90 watts. And that's 110 watts. That is 130 watts. And that actually looks better. But see, we're square wave. So we've uh, gone a little bit too high for this signal. Now you can see, like right there, it's nice and clean. And when I go a little bit higher, it doesn't really clip, but we just start seeing more noise. Now, see this noise down here, that yellow one? That's rip on our power supply. So let's just go right there and freeze that. Okay, now that we have that froze, I'm gonna zoom in. See this little window here, the dark window? That's what we're seeing right here. So let me get a little tighter even. Let's zoom right in on that noise. See that noise? Now if I put these cursors right here, I've got that one lined up there. Let me line this one up on this one. Right here it says 430 kilohertz. So that's the switching frequency of the Class D amp. That's the noise from the Class D amp. All right, let's bring it up again. I want to do it one more time, and I want to pay attention to my input signal so I can reproduce it. Okay, right there, I'm at 780 millivolts in. Okay, I'm going to freeze that, and I'm at 91 watts. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on that again. Okay, now, so I'm right, the other thing I want to show you is I'm right here at the peak of a wave where our audio signal is getting a little bit, you know, messed up. So I'm zooming in on that area there. So I'm zooming in on that area there. Now what I want to do is I want to bring this down and say save. Where is it? Save. And I want to save uh, channel one to... R1, reference one. Okay, just saved it. Okay, now get rid of that. Now see that yellow waveform? If I move the yellow one, whoops, I'm moving the green. If I just move that out of the way, you can see 
that purple one underneath it, that's the saved waveform in that yellow guy. Okay, so let's put the yellow one back on center. Now we're gonna see if we can clean that up. All right guys, so first what I wanna do is show you this cap here. It's a little poly cap. And this is a 220 nano, 0.22 microfarad. Let's put that across the terminals and see what happens. All right, zero, I put the scope back into run mode. So let's go ahead and bring up our voltage again. And let's bring up our signal. Okay, I think that, yeah, that's where we were right there. Okay, that's where we were right there. Now I'm gonna put this little cap across the pins, power pins, and let's see what happens. Look at that, took off those high frequency spikes. Still have the ripple, but the noise spikes, a lot of those were kind of killed off, right? All right, guys, let's get more aggressive. For the ripple, we need something lower frequency, so I think I have something here. Okay, guys, see this cap here? This is a 63 volt, 330 microfarad. This is a solid aluminum conductive polymer uh, capacitor. This made by Kemet. This should be a much better capacitor for what we want for that low frequency ripple. I mean, it's relatively low frequency. That real spiky stuff is high frequency. All right, so we still have our little purple waveform there that we captured. Uh, we're gonna see how much we cleaned it up with this capacitor. Here goes the input voltage. Make sure I got the polarity correct because that is a polarized capacitor. That would be a very loud bang if that was wrong. Okay, so far looking good. Can that bring up the signal? And that's the same level I had before. And that looks much better. Let's freeze that. Okay, those polymer caps have very low ESR. But that ripple, uh, that looks like it's straightened out. Here, I'll zoom in the camera so you can see a bit better. So if you can see the reference one right below the purple one, you see how noisy and jaggedy? And you know what, the yellow one, I'll just go ahead and move it up out of the way a little bit just so you can compare them. All right, what do you think? That looks much better, right? So this one, you see how we had these bumps? That's the ripple and this spiky stuff is just noise. So we still have the noise on there, but you know what? Now what I'm wondering, if I go back and add this polymer cap, if we can get rid of some of the spiky stuff and clean it up so it's nice, you know, not so nasty looking line. What I'm gonna do, since it's a smaller cap, I don't feel bad about just touching the pins. Bigger caps, that's a lot of capacitance to do that. So, but this little cap, we can do it real time. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the uh, voltage again. Here we go. Okay, now bring up the signal. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna to touch the cap and see what happens. Yeah, what do you think of that? That looks better, right? Now I'm maybe not making great contact so it'll look better when I skirt in. But that looks better. You can kind of see now when I let go, see it pop up. So maybe I even add a couple of them. All right guys, so that was interesting, right? Looked at the THC here, then applied the voltage here at these uh, power input terminals, and we could see the THC increase. Then uh, we could see how we could uh, drop that noise down by putting some capacitors here and uh, drop the ripple plus the noise, that uh, spiky stuff. Now we could even add more capacitors and even do a better job, but we saw the effect, right? So that was pretty cool. And we also saw that that noise or that ripple is actually coming from the Class D switching, the 450 kilohertz, which that was kind of to be expected, but didn't know if the power supply was going to add some extra spikes or noise from that. It didn't seem like it did. It looked like it was pretty much all coming from the Class D because those spikes are occurring as the ripples changing, you know, angles, right? So as ripple goes up, you see some spikes as it drops right there when it turns off. So that's turning on and turning off of transistors where we see the, those spikes, okay? Now let's go ahead and put this power supply up and see if it looks any different, all right? And we're gonna get a higher voltage, so a little higher power. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see what happens. Let's do it. 
Okay, so we're getting ready to put the switching power supply on, and this is the noise that we saw before we put the capacitors on, and the yellow one is with the capacitors, okay? And that's at the peak of the waveform where the noise is the worst. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn the scope back on so it's gonna capture the signal, and we are going to, and again, just to remind you, this is the signal up here. We're zoomed in on just one waveform here. So we're going to go ahead and bring up the AC power and see, uh, you know, what it looks like. Now, by the way, the voltage is going to be higher with this AC because we have, uh, you know, a little higher voltage. And I'll read that out to you. I'll show you that in a minute. All right. So here we go. Hopefully everything's good. Okay, we got voltage. Looks like we're running. And we got 49 volts at the uh, power supply, just a little over 49 volts. And there we go, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze that. Now, it is a little bit higher magnitude, the, the actual ripple, the humps. Uh, the noise doesn't look too bad at all, right? It's, uh, here, let me see if I can separate a little bit more. Yeah, the yellow waveform, the noise. Um, now the green and blue, again, that's the left and right channel, the peak of it. So uh, the blue is the negative peak, the green is a positive peak, it's 10 volts per division. There we go, 10 volts per division on those. And again, the ripple is 500 millivolts per division. It's not too bad for 49 volts, it's not even Okay, there's 200 millivolts, and it's about peak to peak, maybe close to 200 millivolts peak to peak. So again, the high frequency ripple doesn't look too bad. It's mostly just the ripple of the class D switching. So we could put another larger cap on there to help knock that down, but I think it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna bring it back up and notice what the uh, THD is, okay? Okay, this is a THD, about 0.07, with the signal at 580 millivolts. And that's without the power supply turned on. That's just from the generator. So it does have a certain amount of noise just from the generator. Okay, now let's go ahead and flip the switch on the power supply. 0.05. And we have 49.6 volts DC going into the power supply. All right, so here's the blue signal again the reference signal, and we're gonna go ahead and power it up again. The green's lights on, so we're running full. So here we're gonna, we're gonna capture the power factor this time. And again, it's a little higher signal because of the uh, higher voltage, higher wattage going out, but let's go ahead and do it. All right, so I, so I captured the power. All right, guys, here's the power factor, 81 VA, 120.6 volts, 671 milliamps. And uh, it's 0.729 is the cosine. So we have 55 VAR, so that's reactive power that we're not really using. And the phase is close to zero here. Let me and so it's 59 watts. So from 59 watts, whoops. So I just uh, erased it, sorry, but it's 59 watts and 80 VA. So we don't have active power factor correction on this power supply. All right, so we're gonna turn on the power supply again and I'm gonna try to get a little bit more power going through this amplifier and uh, we'll see what our power factor is. All right, guys, we're gonna to try to get more power this time, okay? So I'm gonna turn on the power, and you'll see the signal come up. There we go. Okay, now let's see if we can get a little more power out of this thing. All right, it looked like we had a fault. One of the channels turned off, so here, let me try that again. Okay, both channels are coming up. And then one turns off right there. So let's try to reset it. So it turns off and I see a light turn off on the board showing that it's protected itself. 
So let's bring it up. I'll freeze it before we turn off that channel and see how much power we're getting before that happens. Okay, it's right, right there is where it's gonna happen. So, okay, let's do that again. Okay, we gotta have the power supply reset. The voltage has to drop down. Now it's reset, okay. Okay, right about there I think we can get. Okay, we'll freeze that. All right, that was 100 watts. Okay, if you can see that, that's 100 watts there. 138 VA. See, we have 118.4 volts, uh, 1.16 amps. And the cosine's 0.784, that's the power factor. And 85 VAR, that's kind of unused power. So, no nope, active power factor correction again. And that's the degrees, 32 degrees, 32.5 degrees out of phase, current voltage. So 108 watts we have going into the power supply. Now the power supply is very efficient, so let's zoom in on this and see how much wattage we have going to our speakers. Well, I can see it, it's like 18 volts, 18.1, 18.5 volts. So how much is that? So we have about 41 watts into each channel in the 8 ohms. And yeah, I'm not sure why that one channel is clicking off. Here, let's go to, let's zoom in a little closer to the signal here. Let's zoom in on that noise. And there's Ripple. That's 200 millivolts uh, per division. So about plus minus 200 millivolts. We could put another capacitor, clean that up a little bit, but... Not looking too bad. I think that one point is, is I don't see any extra noise from the switching power supply. It looks the same as it did with the Kiwitz, which is actually a switching power supply too. But the noise we're seeing is just from the Class D amp. So uh, yeah, it looks you know pretty normal. And the THC was about 0.08. All right guys, I'm gonna use this thermal camera. We're gonna let it run for a little bit. And I got this black tape I'm gonna put on the heat sink so that it doesn't reflect and we'll get a good reading so we're gonna let this thing just run and we will zoom out so we can watch the waveform and let's just see uh, how warm it gets okay that's what it looks like at ambient temperature about 17 15 degrees C and there's some tape on the side of the heat sink right here if you can see that but yeah that's just what it starts off looking Let's see what it looks like once we heat it up. Okay guys, let's go ahead and apply power. And we're gonna see if we can get this thing to, uh, you know, run for a little while and see if it gets hot. Now, that's about the max I can go before. That's 800 millivolts input, by the way. And for some reason, one of those channels likes to switch off. I have to investigate that. But yeah, I don't know why. It's a uh, built-in protection mode. It's either over current, over voltage, or something. I don't know. But anyway, we're 49 volts of the input and 110 watts going into the board. And it's pretty efficient. So, you know, we're not wasting too much power. On the speakers, we have, or on the 8 ohm loads, we have 18.9 on one, 18.6 on the other. We've heated up the heat sink about 5 degrees just over a few minutes. Here, I'll come back to you and I'll let you know if it's getting hot, but it doesn't seem to be racing away. Okay, we've been running for a little bit and the temperature's up about 60 degrees. So it's only, you know, it's not very hot. Uh, I mean, that's getting warm, but it's not too bad. We're putting about 86 watts into the two 8 ohm uh, loads. So that's about 86.5 watts actually. And we have about 98.8 watts going into the power supply. So pretty darn efficient. It's about 88% efficiency. Okay, now one interesting thing. I just turned off the power and I turned it back on. And both channels came up. Where before, the one channel didn't like to have, uh, you know, that high of a signal. But there's the temperature we get. And it's about 62.8 degrees and 65 uh, degrees on the hot spot. Let's see if I can go up a little bit higher in signal now. Maybe whatever's 
Wow, look at that. Okay, now that's kind of interesting. Now I seem like I can go pretty high. I don't know what that was before. Maybe I had to warm up a little bit, but now I get that much power. That's pretty cool. We got 25.5 on the blue one. The green one's 26 volts. And I just want to uh, look at uh, the power real quick before we let it get too hot. Let me calculate that. All right, let's calculate. So let's capture some power levels and turn it back on here. Okay, I'll bring up the signal. Well, that's great that I can bring it up that high now. I can remember it right about there. No, right there. That's where the THT looks about 0.15. Okay, let me freeze that. I just want to oh, capture some things here. All right, guys. So I've uh, calculate. I've done some calculations here, and on one of the speakers, or on one of the eight ohm loads, we have 81.9 watts. The other one's 84.5 watts. Slightly different gain on the two sides, just slightly. Uh, the input power into the board is 177.8 watts. So that's pretty darn efficient. All right, that's about 90, almost 94% efficiency on the Class D amp. That's pretty darn good. All right, the Class D amp is very efficient. Here, let me show you where I'm calculating power. We'll come over here and look at all the stuff I have going on here. All right, so here's my collection. I'm using the Supco or the Redfish meter for the power coming into the AC, and or the power going into the power supply. It's 193 watts going into it. And there's voltage 111 uh, volts. And there's a the thermal camera. Here's the amp probe. I was measuring temperature right there with that. It's 45C right now. It's been turned off for a couple minutes. And here's the heel key. This is an awesome meter. Reads both AC and DC um, current. And it does VA too, but it's a little bit low on the power level to register. So let's see if I can do that. Yeah, it's a little bit low. Whoops, I just lost the reading because it's not live. But anyway, yeah, so, uh, but it does read the current and the voltage. So it's pretty cool. You get current and voltage at the same time. Uh, pretty neat meter. And you can get VA if the power's a little higher, but it's good for 1,000 amps, and we're just barely registering at 3.6 amps, which incredibly, it has good accuracy at low levels. I've been using it on the bench. Works great. And there's our board under test, under my shield, and there's our scope. So that's my setup. All right. Okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and zoom in on this waveform and see what it looks like at this power level. A little bit more spiky, the noise part, but if I zoom in really tight, you can see that you could actually we could actually calculate the ringing there. But yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I could add some more capacitors, clean that up for sure. But again, that's 200 millivolts peak to peak, so that's pretty low. That's at the uh, peak of the waveform, and it was getting a little bit hairy. You could see that up here at the top, just a little bit, and that's uh, that power supply ripple probably. So. We could clean that up and, and get a little cleaner power. So in the final box, I think I will. All right, that's, uh, that's pretty cool, huh? Uh, it looked like the signal was the same with the Kiwitz or with this. It looked like it's all of the Class D amp that's causing that ripple and that noise. And it looks like we could probably even clean it up even more by adding more capacitors. So right now, I just have that little small poly cap. Uh, 0.22 mic, and then I also have this 330 mic uh, solid aluminum. Okay, this is a polymer cap from Kemet. Really nice cap. These things are stable across temperature and everything, and frequency and all that. These are just really cool caps. Cost a little bit more than a normal aluminum electrolytic, but they're solid, so they're not going to dry out like a, a a wet aluminum either. So yeah, these are really nice caps, and. Uh, did a good job. Nice ESR. So maybe adding two of these, maybe uh, even adding several of them with maybe a ceramic even. You know, we can get different frequencies to uh, cancel out. So yeah, this uh, 
So the next project, when I put it into a box, we'll uh, see how that works, okay? But, yeah, this Hioki meter, I'm going to do a review on that. That's a really cool meter. Uh, it does power measurements, but that's a really nice meter, as well as this Redfish, this uh, Supco. I've shown this in a video before. That's an awesome meter as well. Uh, got some really neat meters here, and kind of showed you some of these meters on this test. And also this, uh, you know, thermal camera. These things are great to be able to capture temperatures. You might be focused on a transistor or diode, something you know is going to get hot, maybe an inductor. But you may not, you know, be aware of maybe a resistor sitting off the side that, or a diode, a small signal diode that you thought is, you know, they just kind of overlooked. And as you put a thermal camera on, all of a sudden you see something getting really hot somewhere else on the board that maybe you weren't anticipating. So thermal cameras are great to capture, you know, all the parts on the board at one time and see how things are heating up together. So they're really great. Uh, spot checking, uh, IR, you know, or just the little thermal probe is great. But yeah, the thermal camera does a nice job. So, but again, when you have a reflective surface like this gold, you need to put some of that black tape on it, something like that, so that um, you get a better reading. Okay, so there you go. And uh, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, next video, I think I'll put this in a box and. Now, the thermos didn't look too bad either, right? But I think if I ran it for a long time, and I was able to get, it was interesting when it was cool, it didn't want, that one channel dropped out. It was like, I don't know what the deal was with that. Now, it seems like it's fine. So I don't know if there's a probe. I, I don't know what was going on. But, uh, yeah, it seems like it, both channels power up and I can get more power out now. So, yeah, that was kind of odd. And I haven't seen that before. So something was going on there. Um, I'm looking to see if there's something possibly, like one of my leads possibly shorted or something. But I don't see anything. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I'm going to have to investigate that a little further. Uh, but I do want to put it into a box with the power supply and all that. And now this power supply has a fan. It's actually not very loud. Um, when I put the mic right next to it, you can hear it, but otherwise it's not too bad. And I think when it's on a box, this fan's going to move air around, which is going to help move air around that also. Uh, even though it's not blowing directly on it, it's just going to move it around the box. And we'll see how that helps things, okay? And then we'll run it for a little longer, uh, for a while at least. Uh, let temperature stabilize and see how hot things get, all right? Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.